Hello everybody. Thanks again for visiting my YouTube channel. This is the place where we discuss the Lord's Recovery Movement of Witness Lee, also known as the Local Church Movement. Well, things have been quiet lately as far as I know, but the co-workers in the Lord's Recovery in North America have put out some new articles on shepherdingwords.com and several of them are repetitive. They are banging the drum of the so-called local ground, which I've shown again and again is not a reliable biblical concept and in fact is little more than a controlling mechanism. It is a mechanism they use to affirm themselves and disaffirm or discredit anybody else. And they cite their usual stuff, which is disregarding the fact that if this is such an important doctrine, why doesn't the Bible spell it out? Why didn't the Lord Jesus mention it? Particularly when the woman at the well asked him where was the place we were supposed to worship. That would have been a perfect time for Jesus to mention the local ground. And he didn't. All he mentioned was in spirit and in truth. Yet the Lord's recovery turns around and says this is actually false. So basically they're saying Jesus didn't get it right in that passage. He left out the local ground. And the Old Testament has citations of meeting at the place I tell you, at the place I tell you, at the place I tell you. And they equate that with the local ground because the Jews were supposed to meet at the temple in Jerusalem. Well, a couple of things about that. Number one, because it's a physical place in the Old Testament does not mean it has to be a physical place in the New Testament. In fact, all the pictures practically in the Old Testament are types of spiritual realities, not physical realities. Number two, actually, when Jesus came, the Jews had taken up the practice of meeting in synagogues and worshiping in synagogues, not in the temple. And Jesus himself actually attended a synagogue and made one of his most famous declarations in a synagogue when he stood up and cited the verses in Isaiah about how the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And Jesus honored the practice of meeting in the synagogue and he did it himself. Well, synagogues weren't prescribed in the Old Testament. If the practice of worshiping God was only supposed to take place in the temple, then why did the Jews meet in synagogues and why did Jesus affirm it? And yet they're insisting that it's the only valid way to meet as a church and that the body of Christ cannot be built up otherwise. If you really look at it and think about it, it doesn't make any sense. Number one, they're saying there have been no real churches for 2,000 years hardly, except theirs. Another point is they never affirm any other group other than the groups in their movement as churches, even though some other movements meet as the church in the city, but they never affirm those people. So this is problematic. They're constantly hammering this point about you got to be here, you got to be with us, and don't listen to anybody else but us. This is what they do. And the question, as I've asked many times, is, is this the way God would do things? Would he set up this tiny group of men as leaders and give them the authority to say, you people don't need to listen to anybody but us? I've come to the conclusion that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even make any sense according to their own history because their whole movement began by not listening to others. And this gets into another article about the body. And this is the one I want to focus on. It's entitled, Being Safeguarded by the Discernment in the Body. Their articles are longer than they need to be. And they're constantly interspersed with these comments that are misleading. For example, let me just start at the beginning of this one. They say, those who bear responsibility in the ministry, the work, and the churches in the Lord's recovery have a biblically mandated responsibility to protect the flock. Okay, all leaders are supposed to protect their flock. Nobody argues with that. But right away in this first sentence, they're misleading you because they say, in the Lord's recovery, little r, as if the Lord's recovery is a real thing of God. God has a recovery and they are it. Well, again, I will tell you that nowhere in the Bible is there mention of a Lord's recovery or that we need to be in it or that somebody can say they are it. 
They talk about the Lord's recovery as if it's really something of God in the sense of mandated directly by God in part of his eternal purpose. Well, if that's true, then why is the Lord's recovery never mentioned in the Bible at all? The Bible mentions many things. It mentions Adam and Eve. It mentions Abraham. It mentions Moses. It mentions David. and mentions Jesus, of course. And it mentions the church. And then it mentions the kingdom of God. It never mentions the Lord's recovery. And yet they talk about the Lord's recovery as if it is in the category of those other things. Where God was actually doing something that's recorded in the Bible and mandated. We are in the church age. The only thing that really exists in this age to God is the church. And the church is all of us. And we are all in the church. And ministries are part of the church. You can be in a ministry or you can be in a church or you can be in both. They complement each other. They're different types of organizations, but they are organizations. All practical churches are organized, which makes them organizations. They aren't just organizations, but they are organizations, as are ministries. And so the dichotomy between organism and organization is a little bit disingenuous and misleading. Yes, there is an organic factor, but there's also an organized factor. Everything isn't done spontaneously in the church. But right away in this first sentence, they're misleading you because they mention the Lord's recovery, and it's not a biblical idea. So let's continue. In performing that duty, they may advise the saints, meaning the members of the church, not to read writings in print or on the Internet that attack the local churches and the ministry of Watchman Nee and Witness Lee. So they're saying performing their duty of shepherding the flock is to advise people not to read anything that attacks the local churches and the ministry of Watchman Nee and Witness Lee. Well, the word attack is misleading because to them, anything that questions Watchman Nee or Witness Lee is an attack to them. It's attack, which means that Watchman Nee and Witness Lee are beyond reproach. They cannot be questioned. They cannot be scrutinized. They cannot be compared to other leaders and teachers down through history. They can't be treated, for example, like we would treat any other teacher or leader down through history, like Martin Luther or John Nelson Darby or anybody else down through history. They are different. You cannot question. And so basically they're leading into this thing of once again, they're trying to control the thinking and behavior of their members. And they are using the excuse of shepherding as an excuse to do it. Well, right away, they're misleading their members. Then they say, if you have miscast this fellowship in its attempt to hide the truth regarding the history of the recovery or to deprive of the freedom to read whatever they like. However, this advice is not an exercise of control, but the issue of loving concern based on the discerning of the nature of these writings and their effect on those that read them. Such advice is based on important biblical principles, which we should give heed. And they're going to go on to leverage simple principles about loving and shepherding to excuse them for telling their members to stay away from anything that might not be saying about their movement leaders and founders that they don't want them to hear because they have this discernment. So they're entitled to do this if they believe it, but if they believe it, they need to make the case and not just call everything that they don't want to hear an attack. The problem with these guys is they claim to have all truth in life, But they have this attitude of such fragility, like they have to keep their members from reading or thinking anything that might make them question what these guys are saying and doing and saying that they need to say and do. And that's weird, because if they have this wonderful truth, then wouldn't their membership be stronger if they considered every question practically and was able to come up with a valid defense against it? instead of saying, don't listen to these things and don't hear these things. I made the analogy a while back about, for example, a drug company doing this, telling all their customers, don't listen to anybody that criticizes us. Don't listen to any evil reports about our drugs. They're good and we love you and we really care about your health and don't, 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 don't listen to these people. Well, if a drug company said that, I would be suspicious of them right away or any other company or anybody else that sell me something. And if they're claiming to have the truth, then they darn sure better be able to defend it in the light of all questions. 
and they don't do that. They simply categorize any questioning as some sort of attack, and they never really address the questioning. They never really respond to legitimate criticism. They just tell people, don't listen to it. I'm afraid that's not the way life and reality work, guys. You don't tell your members to close their mind to anything you don't want people to hear. And they've been doing this so long, what are they going to end up with with this? They're going to end up with a bunch of people that cannot think. That's what they're going to end up. And these guys can hardly think. They're pretty good at putting together words according to a narrative that they were told to repeat. But it doesn't seem to me like they're capable at all of going outside the box and actually answering a question that's a tough one. And I've shown this over and over on this YouTube channel. Here's another one. The ultimate goal of the writings from these external and internal sources is to overthrow the Lord's recovery. Now, this is a narcissistic, self-absorbed, and arrogant and deluded statement. Okay, number one, there is no Lord's recovery. Okay, it's not a biblical concept. There's no basis for it biblically. It's something they invented. They're making their movement the ultimate move of God, which, by the way, is what all aberrant groups do. Secondly, overthrow. Anybody that criticizes you wants to overthrow you. I don't want to overthrow. Overthrow you means somebody wants to take you over. I don't want to take you over. I just want you to start behaving yourselves and be good members of the body of Christ. And I've said time and time again that I believe the Lord's recovery has the right to practice its religion. What you don't have a right to do is to try to control your members by articles like this, which are basically telling them not to think. They say, consequently, these writings are full of criticism, dissension, questioning, rumors, accusation, innuendos, and the misrepresentation of facts and historical events. Well, there might be some of that, but there's also a lot of facts. And if you want to talk about criticisms, how about all your criticisms of, quote, Christianity, unquote. You get to criticize, but nobody can criticize the Lord's recovery? Is that what you're saying? What makes you so special that you're beyond criticism? And why can't you respond to the criticism? If the criticism is so wrong, why don't you say where it's wrong? But your arguments are very unconvincing. You don't really address the, the essence of things. I could sit down with these guys around a table and record it and ask them questions. And if they were open and honest about it, I would take them apart. I mean, they wouldn't stand a chance and they know it. Okay, that's why they have to do stuff like this, where anybody who disagrees with them is evil, dissenting, spreading rumors and innuendos. Uh, sorry, guys, I haven't done any of that. I've been telling people exactly how it is. And I haven't heard any response on shepherdingwords.com to the questions I've come up with. Like, for example, tell me how the Lord's recovery is biblical and tell me how the Bible tells us to organize as the Lord's recovery and not just as the church. Tell me that. You criticize people for giving their churches names and yet you call yourself the Lord's recovery when that's not even a biblical concept. Where do you get off doing that? And so, again, what they are doing here is trying to control their members. They're trying to control their thinking. They're telling them, don't read this stuff because you'll be messed up. So this is just one more example. I've talked about it before. The rest of these articles are pretty much the same thing. There's an interesting one about harmonious coordination between generations to advance God's move. What you got to do when you read this stuff is read between the lines. They've obviously got problems with generations because they're trying to make their kids as gullible as their parents were. And kids generally see through things. You kind of have to prove something to a kid. You can't just tell them how it is and say, you got to believe me and don't question me. Kids will push against that because they want to find out things for themselves. And human beings should. And these guys do not allow you to find out things for yourself. That's the problem. They expect you to believe them that they have the truth, but if you start questioning it, they shut you down. Okay, when you counter somebody like that, who claims to have the truth and can't sit down with you and answer every single question you have to their satisfaction, then that person doesn't have the truth. He is trying to control you, and that's what they're trying to do here. Another sentence. Some may argue that they need to be informed. No, you don't need to be informed and draw their own conclusions. No, you don't need to draw your own conclusions about the matters involved. But this is also a subtle ploy of the enemy. I tell you what, these guys don't know the enemy from a one-eyed alley cat. I'm telling you. And sometimes I think they don't know God at all. Okay, 
Such an individualistic view may be valued in modern culture. As members of the body of Christ, we exist according to a very different principle. Well, wait a minute. Didn't Watchman Nee exercise a very individualistic attitude when he started the Lord's recovery? He basically came out and tipped over all the tables and said, this is the way it is. He can do it, but nobody else can. Only they can do it. This is dumb. I mean, it's just out and out dumb. Let me just say something to the members. Okay, I love you. Great people in so many ways. But if you buy this stuff, if you follow this stuff, then you deserve the bad results you get. You asked for it. I'm not saying you don't need to cooperate with your church. I'm not saying you don't need to be a loving and cooperative member. But they're talking about something very different here. They're not talking about that. They're talking about you need to shut up and listen to us and don't argue with us or the devil's going to get you. I tell you, if I was in a church and my pastor started talking like that, I'd leave. Like that. Because that is not the way you get to the truth. Yeah, you listen to people. Yeah, you esteem others more highly than yourselves. Yeah, you try to sense the Spirit speaking. But when somebody just tells you, listen to us and don't listen to anybody else or you're going to be hurt by the devil, those people are cuckoo. They are cuckoo. And this is cuckoo stuff. And I'm sure they categorize me as the same thing. But I'm sorry, if you buy it, let me ask you this. If they do go bad, if they are wrong, and you've got this attitude, when are you going to find that out? And when are you going to make up your own mind and change your mind? Okay, at what point, what do they need to do for you to say, okay, it's over, we're out of here? Because what they're saying is that's never going to happen. The whole principle they set up is you can't do that. You can never do it. They'll just continue to call whatever they do innuendo and false accusations and blah, blah. If they've got so much truth, which they claim to, it ought to be able to stand up to scrutiny. That's the way reality works. And if you think it works any other way, then you deserve what you get. You deserve what you get. This message is for people with open minds, big boys and big girls, who don't buy this kind of CRAP, because that's what it is. Okay, I've been going on a while. I might follow up with something with some of the other articles, but all these articles, again, this shows their desperation because just about everything they print is about shut up your mind, don't listen, don't listen to anybody but us, blah, 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 block it out, block it out. We're trying to protect you because we love you. Well, just because they claim to love you doesn't mean they know what's best for you. They may love you, but that doesn't mean they know what's best for you. It's your life. If you want to turn it over to these guys, Ron Kangas and Vincent Phillips and Minoru Chin, you want to make them your God instead of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, then that's your business. But don't say I didn't warn you. Thanks for listening. Take care.